and welcome to Kids Corner on Armstrong Channel 20. I'm Miss Krista and I'm so excited today to be at Dodvins Elementary School in Poland with Mr. Henry's and Mrs. DeVito's second grade classes. Do you love to feel the wind, to feel the breeze on you, especially during a nice warm day? Me too. We learned that you can not only feel the wind, but you can touch the wind. You can taste the wind. You can smell the wind. You can hear the wind. But can you paint the wind? Well, you sure can in our book by Patricia McLaughlin and Emily McLaughlin called Painting the Wind. After we read our book, we're going to make our very own paper pinwheel so that we can see the wind. And we're just going to use printer paper to do it. I hope that you stick around to see how we make this craft. I hope that you love our book. And if you would like Armstrong to come to your school, have a grown-up email us at channel20, that's channel20, at agoc.com. I think I hear Mr. Henry's and Mrs. DeVito's classes coming right now. Let's get ready. <laughs> birdie named Mrs. DeVito that you were studying or are studying still the weather. Is that true? Yeah. You're studying the weather. Excellent. I love the weather. Um, not so much today. What's it like today? No. What's the weather like? Gloomy. It's gloomy. It's a little gloomy, but hopefully, hope. what else is it? This morning it was foggy. It was, and I heard somebody else that said foggy too. It was a weird foggy morning, right? Yeah. My daughter told me it looked like a, the, a witch had painted the morning. She said it was like a dark and gloomy morning. <laughs> what else was it? Raining. It was raining. It was raining a little bit. It's not doing wonders for Miss Krista's hair. Yeah, what else? It was, well, I think kind of, it was really foggy at my house, and I thought it looked like, um, Someone, someone got a ladder and painted the sky. It did look like someone painted the sky. It looked like a, this, this I mean, it was beautiful to see all those clouds, but at the same time, you were like, oh man, I can't play outside today. What else? Again? Drizzling. Yeah, it was drizzling now. Yeah, what else? It was stinky. It was stinky. It was, you know what, that's funny you say that. It was stinky. Um, it, I, last night when I came home, it was like nine o'clock, I had to go to the Giant Eagle. Uh, it smelled like worms. Because everything, the worms have been hibernating, right? They've been deep in the ground and now they know it's warm. Everything's starting, you see the birds are out, right? What else is out right now? What else is out? Um, this morning there was a bunch of worms on my driveway. Was there? There's a bunch of worms on your driveway. This is a good time to go fishing, huh? Yeah. You pick up all those worms and then knot them delicately on the hook, right? What else? Squirrels? Squirrels, I saw. Yeah, there's squirrels are out. What else is out? How do you know that the weather's getting warmer? What else do you see when the weather starts to get warmer? Um, <gasps> you see worms? What else do you see, Matryoshka? The Pardon? The sun. The sun. You start to see the sun for the first time. What else do you see? To see rabbits. Rabbits, you're right. What else do you see? Flowers. Flowers. What else? Oh, so much. I know. I'll come back to you. You raise your hand when you're ready. Uh, what else do you see? Butterflies. Butterflies. What else? <laughs> Ladybugs? Ladybugs, almost. What else? Bees? Bees, almost. What else? Um, flies? Flies, almost. Mm, they'll all be in my house because I always forget to shut my door. What else? Leaves on trees. You start to see the buds, don't you? What else? Beautiful, beautiful grass. Beautiful grass. How long has it been since we've seen grass? It feels like a hundred billion weeks, huh? What else do you see? Stink bugs, you're right. Yeah. Somebody said something very important that starts to happen in the spring, and that is that flowers start to grow. And how do flowers grow? What happens? How, how do we get more flowers? There's something very important that happens in the weather so that we get more flowers just chilling in the back. Rain. Rain, what else? Um, you. Sun. Sun, what else? Escape. I just forgot. Oh, that happens to me all the time, but I'm 38, so I have a better excuse. What else? 
it gets warmer, but you're right. So you need the warmth, because if, if it was too cold, then the flowers would just freeze, right? And they would die. Um, you and the red in the back. Yep, what else? Um, you would need bees pollinating the flowers. You would need the bees. You're right, to pollinate the flowers. And there is something else that helps pollinate the flowers. Soil. Soil, you definitely need good soil, right? What else? Was that your answer? What else? Butterfly. You definitely need butterflies. That's excellent because they go from flower to flower just like the bees to pollinate. But what else do you need in the back of the way? You need worms, you're right, because the worms aerate the soil so that the roots can grow. What else? Earth. Earth, you definitely need earth. Good earth, right? With the right nutrients in it. What else? You need roots. You would need roots, good, strong roots, right, so the flower doesn't wash away. So let me ask you this. Have you ever seen, who's seen a dandelion? Good, oh yeah, I think a lot of you have seen dandelions. Not you, your yard is perfect, right? Mr. Connor, that's right. Um, so a lot of you have seen dandelions. Have you ever made a wish on a dandelion? You've made a wish. And what happens after you make a wish? So you, you're holding your dandelion and you make a wish. What do you do? Do it, what do you do? Right, and your breath makes all of the dandelion flowers go into the wind and they carry all through, they settle elsewhere, and they grow into new dandelions. So what is important to help flowers, to get new flowers? I said it. D well, dandelions are a flower and that's very important. What else? Water. Water's important. Alexis. Wind. Wind is important. Can you feel the wind? Yes. Can you see the wind? Well, if you look outside right now, do we see the trees, the branches on the trees moving at all? Uh, so I see a couple of them moving. That means there's probably a light wind out there. So you can see the wind when things sway around. Can you smell the wind? What if your neighbor makes grills out and makes hamburgers and hot dogs? Can you sometimes smell them? That's because the wind carries the scent over to you. Can you touch the wind? Yeah. Well, yeah, so you know there's a wind. Even if you closed your eyes and closed your ears and closed your nose, you can still feel the wind on you, right? Can you? You're right. Can you paint the wind? No. I bet you can. I bet you can paint the wind, and we're going to find out how. This book is by Patricia McLaughlin and Emily McLaughlin, and it's about a young boy who goes to an island with his dog. That's Mr. Greg's favorite dog, in case you're wondering. And he learns to paint the wind. I paint all winter long, and I wait on my island Surrounded by water and light, I paint the places where the water meets the land. I paint the deep ponds. I paint the clouds. But I cannot paint the wind. As hard as I try, I cannot paint the wind. Then the day grows warmer. The harbor seals leave for cool waters. The marsh grasses turn green. What I have waited for all year happens. Spring. Summer is here. And the painters come back to the island. They come on the mail boat with their paints and easels and bags of books and favorite pots and pans. Some bring their children. All of them bring their dogs. The painters paint different things. They paint with different paints, with watercolors, acrylics, or oil. They paint at different times, some in the morning and some at night, some all day long. But there is one thing they all paint. They all paint my island. The painter of flowers wakes at dawn when the island light first comes. He feeds his dog, Tess, and together they go out into the garden. Tess lifts her nose and smells the air. What's there? What's been there? I sat at my easel beside a clump of iris blooms gone by. The painter of flowers takes out his oil paints. He paints flowers with names like Cosmos, Foxglove, Ladyspur, Poppy. He loves the names of flowers. 
Today the painter begins to paint a poppy. He rummages through his tubes of reds. Alizarin and crimson, he says, the terracotta, scarlet lake. He loves the names of his paints too. He begins with a color called cadmium red, brushing the red across his canvas with his big brush. Swoosh. The painter works for a long time, and when the sun is overhead, he is surprised. We walk to the beach to eat lunch. Tess sits next to some yellow hawkweed in the sunlight. The painter smiles. Tomorrow, he will paint his coffee-colored dog, Tess, next to the yellow hawkweed in sunlight. Good dog, Tess, he whispers to her. Sweet girl. Happy, Tess lies down and closes her eyes. Are you starting to feel calm? The painter of faces is late to wake. I sleep all night with faces in my dreams, she tells me, and I wake with them on my walls. Young faces, thoughtful ones, sad faces, wise faces, laughing faces. Watching wary faces. Eyes look at the painter. They seem to follow her as she coaxes her dark-eyed dogs, Emmett and Charlie, out from under the bed covers. The painter puts on her running shoes. Let's go, she says. Charlie does not like to run, but Emmett will run anywhere, anytime. Emmett is eager. Emmett sounds like a second grader. Together, we run down the island road. We pass people whose faces the painter has already painted, and some faces she may one day paint. Charlie sits tired of running, so we walk. We walk to the only store on the island where the painter will paint the storekeeper, Sasha, with her sweet lined face. A sign tape near the cake mixes reads, please do not eat frosting from the can. Have you ever seen a sign like that, a giant eagle? No. Mm -hmm. Have you ever eaten frosting from the can? No. Oh. Yeah. Sasha is shy about being painted, so the painter puts Charlie on her lap, Emmett at her feet. Sasha pets them. Emmett begins to lick her feet, making her laugh so that she isn't shy anymore. I paint a red kite hanging from the ceiling. The painter begins to paint a picture of the sweet-faced woman and the happy dogs. The painter of still lifes has not slept all night. She painted until dawn. The peppermint plant in the window, the glass bowl of tulips, their green stems crisscrossing in water. She is finishing painting the fireplace mantle crowded with dried crab's angel wings. A moon snail, jingle shells, smooth good luck stones with white rings around them. A jar full of sea glass. She yawns and stretches. I'll sleep soon, she says to me. But she doesn't sleep. The sun comes into the room and she begins to paint the sunlight on the old wooden floors. She paints the sparkles the dust makes after she shakes her dog Owen's blanket. I paint a picture of smooth gray stone. She paints the shadows in the light. And then when Owen rests his head on the window sill, she paints his sad, sad look. My pal, she says to him, and he looks sideways at her, the whites of his eyes showing. He looks embarrassed because I'm talking to him. As she paints, Owen makes a small sound. He's hungry, she says, still painting. Owen sighs up, a little like a snuffle, and lies down on the rag rug, waiting. <coughs> He's patient, but not too patient. And in a minute, he will get his red bull and bang it on the floor. The painter will laugh and stop painting. Have you ever been so focused on something that you didn't want to stop? Sometimes. Sometimes playing Minecraft? Yes. <laughs> the painter of landscapes moves away from what he paints. He takes his dog, Meatball, in his truck with him. He has children, but he doesn't take them painting. They smudge the paintings and want to go to the store and buy things. Sometimes they whine. Meatball is quiet and good company. The painter of landscapes paints the sky, the beach, the blue of the ocean, the black of the storms. Beside him, Meepo looks out at the water. Two more eyes watching the world. 
couple more pages. When it is warm, the landscape painter takes water and food and Meatball and they go out in his boat. Meatball likes the boat. He sleeps belly up in the sun. Sometimes he howls at herring gulls until the painter tells him to stop. At night, the landscape painter paints the moon. He loves the moon. So far away, so near, he says to me. When the landscape painter paints the moon, he forgets who he is. He forgets his wife and children. He even forgets Meatball. Today, the landscape painter paints the beach. I set up my easel next to his, and the painter begins to paint the waves crashing on the shore. Meatball runs from a wave and is caught smiling, his ears flying in the wind and the white of a wave blowing behind him. And that is the way the painter paints the scene. The sand, a wave, and a little rainbow of water above a running dog. I feel the wind against my face, and I see the trees all bent over. I pick up my paintbrush and begin to paint. At summer's end, the painters open up the doors to a barn. The dogs are outside, lying in the sun. One striped cat walks, tail up, unafraid, past them all. The paintings are on the walls, the faces, young and old, the ball of tulip, the bowl of tulips, the full moon over a quiet sea, a red poppy that fills a canvas. The dogs are on the walls too, caught forever by their painters, caught forever in one single moment. I look at the painting of Meatball running from the wave, his ears flying. He points to my painting hung next to his, my painting of bent trees. You have too, he says. I smile. You have painted the wind. I say to the landscape painter, he is right. On my island, surrounded by water and light, I have done what I could not do before. I have painted the wind. Who likes the wind? Oh, I love the wind. What can you do with the wind? Who can fly a kite? Oh, I love to fly kites. I'm not very good at them, but I love them. Who can make the wind fly their paper airplanes? Who can hear the jingle of the wind when it hits um, all of the wind chimes? And you hear Who can see streamers and flags in the wind? Right? Pretty soon there'll be 4th of July and we'll be able to see all the flags flying everywhere. Who has ever had a pinwheel? Have you had a pinwheel? I love pinwheels. I'm so glad. Well, this is kind of going to be an artistic pinwheel, and this is what you're going to make today. Mine's not very artistic yet because it's just white. Blah. <laughs> Which is funny that I say uh, it's blah because my last name is white. So it's like my last name, like my name is Krista Blah. That'd be strange. So we're going to put a little color to this because this is going to be your own artistic inspiration of wind. Um, can we um, will it, when the wind is blowing, or will it move? They will move. So you have to make them. We have here, this one is just paper, just, uh, I almost said typewriter paper, just printer paper. And it's got a pen through it, and it's got a little eraser on the back to hold the pen in. And you've got to maneuver it a little bit, but if you do it just so, you will be able to, oh, not take off the eraser. You will be able to get it to move. Who would like to make this craft? Oh, well done. Okay, this is a fun craft because you need your creative genius inside your head to make this. So what you have in front of you is a piece of printer paper. And all I did to this paper, this is just regular paper that you would put in your printer if you were printing out a picture that you made at home. And you'll see that I put a crisscross on it and a circle in the middle. And that circle is going to help us in the crisscrosses to show us where we need to cut so that we can make the points to our pinwheel, okay? What you need to do though first, and I still have some materials to put out that I have not put out yet on purpose, is to take your square piece of paper and decorate it. You have markers in front of you. You also have something else in front of you. What do you have in front of you? What else? A napkin, what's, what's our young friend holding here? What is that? Well done, yes, it is just a pencil. But guess what it's going to be today? It's going to be your ink stamp. I'm going to give you ink and you will be able to use the eraser, put it into the ink and stamp it onto your paper to make designs, okay? I will put the ink pads on the paper towels. 
and then you can use them from there. Uh, please be careful to try to keep the ink pads on the paper towels so it doesn't make too big of a mess. A very little bit of instruction here. If you are finished with both sides, the next step is going, going to be is going to be to take your scissors. You are going to cut the lines. Look at me, this is important. You are going to cut the lines, which are the corners, up to the circle. So you're going to cut just up to the circle. When you hit the circle, stop and you're only cutting on the lines up to the circle, not all the way through. We need that middle part to stay where it is, okay? That circle has to stay together. Only cut up to the circle, okay? And then myself, Mrs. Schuster, or Mrs. DeVito will be around to put tape in the middle of the circle to make it into a pinwheel. And then Mr. Henry is going to help us put the, the stick on and the pen in the middle, okay?
Robbins Elementary School with Mrs. DeVito's and Mr. Henry's second grade classes. We learned that you can feel the wind, you can hear the wind, you can see the wind, but can you paint the wind? You sure can. In the McLaughlin Sisters book, Patricia McLaughlin and Emily McLaughlin painting the wind. After we read this book, we painted our own wind in the form of pinwheels, just like this. We colored and stamped both sides of it, and then we put a pin right through the middle, and now we have our very own pinwheels to take home. I hope that you loved our book and our craft, and if you would like Miss Krista to come to your school, have a grown-up email us at channel20, that's channel20, at agoc.com. This is Miss Krista for Kids Corner on Armstrong Channel 20. I hope you have a fantastic day.